Hey everyone, welcome back to Wild Speculations. I'm Daniel. I'm Scott. This week we talk about Critical Role Campaign 2, Episode 68, Reflections. Yes. Uh, aptly named. Uh, yeah. I'm still worried that Episode 69 is going to be called The Sacrifice of Angels. Uh, but, uh, we were wrong in our specific monster predictions yeah. for the uh, for the bridge encounter. Mm -hmm. uh, correct in our mechanics assumption, though. Yes. In the is it going to be a the single failure triggers the whispers, or is it going to be a, a yeah. group test? And it was a single failure was enough. Um, but that's getting a little bit ahead because they. Didn't skip past the long rest. No. Uh, and role played through it. Yes. And we had Nott and Yasha taking watch together first. Yes. Uh, probably my favorite interaction of the people at the table. Because technically, I think my most favorite interaction was between. Travis and Laura. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, a huge one. And like, I was like, so this is what a Charisma 7, Wisdom 7 <laughs> interaction looks like. Uh, now, do you think... Do you think Sam went into that thinking about not exposing Caleb's secret? No. Okay. I, I don't either. I think Sam said it forgetting that it's in not character Lord, yeah. Yasha didn't know. Yeah. Um, I think that this whole conversation started... Kind of to just rip Laura, knowing that she was watching at home, and oh, I'm gonna check her stuff, you know. Um, yeah. And it just kind of took a downhill turn quickly. I can I buy that. I can definitely see Sam doing that. Um, I think that. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think their interactions, their relationship, is one of the ones I'm most excited to see unfold. Um, because at this point, it's still a lot of player knowing it's the other player interaction. Because when you think about it, Not has attacked Yasha twice in combat, has accused her of stealing multiple times, has accused her of being a spy, a murderer, all these evil things. And she's just like, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever, yo. It's like, at some point, she just couldn't got a backhand, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, maybe. Um, you know, she's not has never been accepting, fully accepting of Yasha. Yeah, she's always throwing shade at her for leaving when Ashley was gone, going in and out, always. Accusing her of being a spy, of being evil, of wanting to kill them, of threatening her, of, you know. Um, Do you think that is Sam putting what he fears not son feels about that? It could be. Um, the question would be, why does he why does he not see Yasha as the mother figure? Well, she's never been why, particularly. Why, why does she choose Yasha to put that on? Because Yasha's the only one of them that comes and goes. Okay. She's the only one that leaves. And when Molly was there, Molly sort of ran interference. Because everyone in the beginning was like, hey, what's up with this? Yeah. When in IRL, that's just what they had to do to accommodate Ashley's filming schedule. Right. 
And, you know, and I get that, but in character, yeah, okay, what's up with this? Okay, it's been pseudo explained, you know? Yeah. Like, but not Sam, never let up on it. Yeah. And never let it go. And always, always, even in the most positive light that not puts Yasha in, there's still shade. There's still negativity. Well, I mean, in some ways, even though she's drunk most of the time, not in a lot of ways, is the only one who sees everyone for what they are. She's the only one that doesn't view anyone with rose-colored glasses. Yeah. Um, and we got evidence of that in this conversation. Where she's like, all of them are shady people. Yeah. Uh, even Chester. Yeah. yeah. She's cute as a button, but, you know. Yeah, she commits petty crimes all the time. Defacing property, stealing stuff. Yeah. Um, I love the, the, what's the worst that could happen? Yes. <laughs> Holy <laughs> fuck, what's wrong with you? Yeah, that's so much worse than what I was thinking. Yeah. And I, I loved Sam's characterization of not, of being a ball of nerves yeah. and just constantly ramping up the, the fear. The other thing that's great was we got this, we, so... When I say we, I don't mean just you and I. I mean the community at large always talks about Sam's comedic ability because he throws it out there all the time. Yeah. But this conversation let us see a lot of Ashley's comedic yeah. timing and precision and, you know, uh, just the way she was snapping. At, Wait, did he kill? Oh, so I should use it in front of the group so I seem trendy. And... <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, it's not like I'll throw you under the bri under a bridge. There's a Why would you say that? <laughs> There's a bridge right there. And lo and behold, who went under the bridge? Yeah, th this is another one of those episodes where it's like the conspiracy theorists can say they write all this stuff, man. They write because everything that happened on that bridge, yeah, Sam mentioned at the uh, in that first scene, yeah. Because when they're getting ready to tie everybody up, he's like, well, why don't I just stay back here with Jester? Because she has the Dimension Door thing. Mm -hmm. And it ended up being not Jester, Dimension Door off the gibbering mouther. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of intentional and unintentional foreshadowing. Uh, yeah, I, I think that one was unintentional. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. Uh I saw also, now I don't think Yasha sees it, and I'm not even sure that Ashley sees it, Okay. but I saw a ray of hope in that conversation with Nott, okay. when Nott tells Yasha Caleb's killed his whole family, hmm. because when Yasha finds out what the Orphan Maker did, yep. she's going to need somebody. And now that she knows that about Caleb, maybe she'll reach out to Caleb for that help. Hmm. That's that's my hope anyway. Okay. Um, so like w that became super important for the revelation that we're going to get. Mm -hmm. uh, Especially if we're right. Which... Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, that's true. I do proceed from the position that we are correct in that assumption. But and I believe that's a good I, position to be in. Yeah, I think we are. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then we have Bo and Caleb's watch. Yes, the Empire Kids. There was some interesting... Marisha, this episode, was very subtle and in her performance mm -hmm. and sort of background. Yeah. Uh, partially because of circumstance and partially just because... Uh, I think she knows Liam well enough that when he starts talking, she's ready to be that bounce. Yeah. For him. That sounding important. Yeah. And I also think, in a weird way, if she could control her snarkiness, 
is probably the way that she would be the better investigator for it. Okay. Because often you if you just let somebody talk, yeah, they will tell you everything you want to know. Um, and you don't even necessarily one or two questions here and there at the right time will they expose everything you need. Yeah. Um, and Caleb says, what's on the other side? Mm -hmm. And she thought he was talking about the bridge. And he's like, no, death. And I think Caleb rightfully fears that he's going to hell or one of the hells. Um, okay. I think I don't think there's any way out of that for him. I don't think, um, except for maybe if he can pull off what he's trying to do. Uh, so we'll see. Um, Bo said that she is also looking at hell. Uh, or she thinks she and in some I don't think Bo really believes it. Yeah, but I think she's trying to comfort Caleb in some way that she can, and say, yeah, if you're going, I'm probably going too. Well, but I think Bo's hell is not the nine hells. Bo's hell is having to be a librarian in Ayun's library. Like, uh, um, I, I I'm not sure. I, I, I don't think being in the library is as bad as Bo makes it out to be for herself. Having to serve people and, and get books, I think, would be Bo's personal honor. Would, would be a version of hell for her. Okay. Maybe. Uh, and uh, having to take orders from Scanlon. <laughs> Well, that would be Mauritius. <laughs> <laughs> Being at Sam's back and call. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I, and I, I think this is a case of these are two of the three who have the most negative self-image. Yeah. The third being not. Yeah. Um, and she's probably number two, actually. So Bo would be three. In the group. Um, okay. I would argue Ford is up there. You could argue Ford is up there, but... Uh, like, Knott's negative self-image comes from the fact that she's a goblin. Well, no, because she had negative self-image before that. Yeah. Not big problem why it's so pressing on her is that now she outwardly resembles what she felt like she was inside. That's fair. Um, Ford, on the other hand, is he's more on the way out of that in the reinventing himself process. Uh, which is why he's like, I, I like this. I don't want to go back to that. I'm happy with who I am. You know, I like who I am now. I buy that a little bit. Um, but he's got a he's got a a day of reckoning coming. Yes, and I still think there's that Ford is a lot shadier than you think he is. I, I I think there's a part of me that thinks this yes, this is a persona, but it's as much a persona as oh yeah, I hated my past, I hated who I was because oh you guys do, so this will endear me to you. Yeah. So he plays that up more than it was. That's fair. Um because I still think sorry Travis, you're great, but Ford is a shady son of a bitch and he's up to no good. <laughs> Yeah, um, I I don't foresee me jumping off 
the Ford is evil train for a long time. <laughs> That's true. Um, uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Travis has dug that hole. Um, Bo asks Caleb if he, well, it is implied, the question is implied, are you growing beyond not now? Yes. Or are you jealous of not? Mm -hmm. um, do you think... And see, that was the thing. When he started talking about that, she's like, oh, was I right? Like, the look on her face is like, oh, was I right? Are you in love with not? And you're jealous of the husband? When he, you oh. know, that face she had? When he first started talking? She was like, oh, okay, so I was right. But yeah, let's listen. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I think she kind of felt vindicated and also uh, proven wrong at the same time. Okay. Um, like, not in love in the romantic sense, but yeah, this is a love, and yeah, you're jealous, and yeah, I was right, and you know. See, I think that was all to cover her own feelings of self love Because when she's talking to him about that, She's talking about, you know, not was your partner. Yeah. You know, when you have that bond, it sort of remains. And we had that conversation between Bo and Yasha mm -hmm. about her leaving her partner behind. Yeah. Um, she was trying to reach out to Yasha to make her feel better about leaving Zawala. Mm-hmm. So I, I view that more as Bo trying to protect herself or project her own feelings onto Caleb. See, if anything, I would see it as her seeing Caleb in the, in the position of her partner and identifying with not. Because not's the one that's leaving the partnership mm, with yeah. her husband. Yeah, that, that's also true. Possible. So she's like, oh shit, I need to know. You know, if I, if I were to see it that way, I'd be like, oh shit, how does he feel? Because that's how my partner feels. Mm. They're in that same position. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I think that's where, yeah, that's my take on where Bo's mind went. Okay. That I, I can I can buy that. I can completely buy that. Um, but talk, talk, speaking of Ford, he and Caduceus have their church service? <laughs> I mean, uh, for lack of a better thing, uh, and more they, meeting with a missionary proselytization than in church service. Fair, uh, but we have you know they're, they're, they talk about the terror that they are experiencing and within versus the wild mother. Yeah, um, that they are where they need to be, and Ford comments, "You're smiling though." And Caduce is like, oh, yeah. yeah. And I've been binge watching My Hero Academia with my daughter. Okay. And that is basically central to All Might. Uh, this, the symbol of peace, the Superman of this universe. Okay. Uh, he always smiles when he's saving people, no matter what's going on. Gotcha. No matter how, big, how bad the fight is, he's, he's smiling. Gotcha. And he okay. tells the, the young hero, up and coming hero, he's like, Yeah, it's more scary for the bad guys if you smile. Yeah, get into that. And see, the thing that I love about this, the two things I love about their conversation is one, the beginning. You scared? Yeah, good. You should be. This is terrifying. Oh, shit. Now it's even worse. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, both, both green. People seek out friends, seek out you know that comfort from friends, and neither get it back. <laughs> Just makes it worse. Um, and then, so several episodes ago now, Caduceus made the comment that he was an open book. You know that yeah, and I've got no, you know I've got nothing back. How many siblings did you say? Yeah, I have some. Maybe you'll meet you know totally evasive shutting off. <laughs> And he's just like, Callison, I love you. I have a theory about that. Okay. And the theory is, 
he has done little but name them. And maybe not even that. Okay. Um, I have a feeling that he has one to three siblings that precede him by so many years that they left on their quest before he was born. Mm -hmm. So he does not actually know them. He merely knows of them. Uh, because fear bulbs are long lived. Yes. Um, so, you know, having a first family, raising them up, sending them out, and then having a second family is definitely possible. Yeah. Um, and potentially a third family, depending on how early you start and how late you go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, there's also the possibility that even though in his stories he refers to these people as his siblings, some of them may not have actually been his siblings. Yeah. Uh, they may have been spirits. Mm -hmm. They may have been adopted people. Uh, orphans that the family adopt, picked up. See, uh, my, my thought went to spirits. 